Hello everybody, CEO Matthew 6 here, and in this video I will be introducing the competitive aspect of Pokemon. Now you might be wondering to yourself, there's a competitive aspect to this? I thought it was a kids game. And you would be right. Pokemon was originally intended for children as the creator of the game uh, reminded him of when he collected bugs as a child, hence the slogan, gotta catch them all. However, there is much to delve underneath the surface of this innocent game, and it should be noted that there is a lot of math as well. There are tournaments held to display the pl best players in the world's skill, and these are held both online and in real life. The best part about these tournaments? Completely free to join. As long as you can withstand the gauntlet comprising intense matches against players of incredible skill, you may very well walk home with an award. The Pokemon Video Game Championships also does quite the good job of distributing swag bags to all participants. Now, as an introduction video, I'm not going to delve too far into the details of this game. Those are going to come in later videos. For this video, I'm going to talk about dynamic values. No two Pokemon are alike, and even Pokemon within the same species can be observed to have different stats, especially at higher levels. The, there are exactly three factors that shape a Pokemon's stats, and I will be discussing them in detail within the next few minutes. The first value that I will mention in this, po in this video is a Pokemon's nature. This can be visibly seen on a Pokemon stat page. Your Pokemon stats may appear with one of them highlighted in red and another in blue. Or, all of a Pokemon's stats can be colored white. The red stat indicates that the stat is being boosted by a factor of 1.1 times, while the blue stat indicates a reduction by a factor of 0.9 times. If none of the stats are highlighted, then the Pokemon's nature will not have any effect on its stats. In terms of competitive usefulness, a Pokemon should always run a 1.1 by 0.9 nature, as the benefit gained will always outperform the stat lost. Choosing a correct nature that complements your Pokemon well is one of the first steps when creating a Pokemon you would want to use and cherish. The next value that determines a Pokemon's stats is the individual value. This value cannot be seen, but it is implied under a Pokemon's characteristic. There are very, very many characteristics that a Pokemon can have, and they generally indicate what the Pokemon's strongest stat is. For example, a Pokemon that likes to run has its highest stat in speed, whereas one that is proud of its power has a strong attack stat. These individual values can rank anywhere between 0 and 31, and directly correspond to one extra point at level 100 for the stat. In many Pokemon games, I believe starting with Emerald, there is a way in-game to determine your Pokemon's individual values. Generally speaking, there is a man in a post-game area in Pokemon X and Y. This man resides in the Pokemon Center of Kylode City that will give a Pokemon in your party his personal rating. If he says that a stat cannot be better, you automatically know that your Pokemon has a perfect IV in that stat. If two or more stats are tied, he will mention the Pokemon's best stats. In addition, there are very many IV calculators, Metal Kid owns the best one, on the internet that you can use to determine a Pokemon's stats. The final factor that affects a Pokemon's stats is the effort value. This is determined by the amount of Pokemon fought, the type of Pokemon fought, the vitamins a Pokemon were fed, and in Generation 6, Super Training. At level 100, a fully effort trained Pokemon will have approximately 127 more stat points overall than, a, than an identical copy of it that was not effort trained. However, there is a limit to how many stat points in a single stat can be invested, and it should be noted that only two of a Pokemon's six stats can be maximized at any time. One should track a Pokemon's EVs through manual calculation using the given values on Bulbapedia. I will explain the nuances behind effort values in a future video. Now that, you know, now that you know that a competitive metagame exists, and you know the underlying basis for it, you're well on your way to becoming a Pokemon Master. Stay tuned for the next episode, where I will be going over breeding mechanics so you too can breed a team of badass Pokemon. And finally, in case you were wondering, why is this quack teaching me about Pokemon? Why can't I watch someone who's just good at the game? Well, though I'm not known for a strong performance in standard play on Smogon Simulator or in the video game championships, I do have quite the record in the Little Cup metagame. I'm generally referred to as the third best generation 4 player, and I also did quite well in the fifth generation. Being able to vote in two of the suspect tests hold, held and reaching number one on the ladder during those times. I also proved myself in DPP once again during the Little Cup Premier League, sporting a 7-0 flawless record. Thanks for watching, and I'm out.